All right, this is a 2004 Dodge Ram 1500, 4.7 liter V8. Notice that it is not even close to being uh, all the way in the driveway. And that relates to what we're talking about. So this truck I've had for a while and it's been having some electrical issues which have progressively gotten a lot worse. So the issue we're having is an intermittent no crank. You turn the key to run and nothing happens. Uh, it doesn't try to start or anything and when you release the key the brake and ABS lights just flash and then it dings again. This has happened a couple times now. So the first time it happened, it kind of sorted itself out and eventually it did start again. And the second time it happened, it just failed completely. I took it to get an alignment and they called me out, told me it wasn't starting. And I tried a bunch of stuff and it just refused to start completely. So when that happened, I ran the self-test on the instrument cluster and the codes came back saying that it was not communicating with the PCM. And in general, it was acting like the PCM was not getting power at all. The reason I say that is because on a system like this, this is not a CAN bus system. This is just a regular uh, star style communication system. It means that all the modules in the truck are tied together on the same signal wire. And on those kinds of systems, they are usually designed so that they can operate independently so that you don't get stranded. Uh, CAN bus is the only one where if it loses a module then pretty much everything fails. But this isn't a CAN bus and since it wasn't starting at all uh, that told, tells me that it was not getting power at all because it should be able to run without any communication from the other modules. So I did some reading, found that it might be loose connections. So I came over here, this is the integrated power module Dodge calls it, or the power distribution box. And I wiggled a bunch of these wires under here, all these connectors which aren't the tightest in the world. And I also wiggled the PCM connectors over there, and it eventually did start. So I figured it was a loose connection, and I would take care of it when I got time. It ended up doing it two more times, and wiggling the wires around, primarily under here, caused it to be able to start again but then one day it just completely refused to start. 11 o'clock at night in the middle of a Walmart parking lot, it would not start no matter how much I wiggled the wires. So we dragged it back home and the next day I took all these connectors off the bottom here because wiggling these had seemed to make the most difference. I took all these connectors off, cleaned them all up, put them back on with dielectric grease. You can see some there to prevent corrosion and that seemed to fix it for about two drive cycles and then it died right where you see it sitting now. Last night I started tracking down the problem. Uh, originally I thought it might be this front control module here because the ambient temp sensor did go to reading 130 degrees Fahrenheit all day at one point which it was more like 50 degrees um, but that was not the issue. What I ended up finding is I got the wiring diagram, started tracing wiring, and this is the PCM connector. This connector right here is C1 for the PCM, and this is an NGC style PCM. You can tell because it's got four plugs. Now this wire right here, this red one, that is the B plus feed to the PCM. That's supposed to have battery voltage at all times. And what I found was that it only had about five or seven volts at any given time. So, I started over here at the power distribution box where the uh, PCM gets its feed, its feed from. I did check all the fuses before you wonder, uh, and all of them are fine. And I came under here. Now, this is C1 right here. That contains the B plus feed to the PCM. I believe it's this wire. Yeah, it should be this wire right here. And what I found was that it had full battery voltage to this pin on this connector, so it wasn't an issue right here. 
Now the only connector between this power distribution box and the PCM is C130 which is over there. There is one splice somewhere in this harness um, which is splice uh, S110 I believe it is but that was less likely to have an issue so I came over here and this is connector C130 and you can see where that pin is right there that is the uh, that's pin A4 that's the PCM B plus wire feed it has full voltage on both sides of this connector which means we're getting battery power to this connector and that's that may also means that there's battery power past the uh, splice I mentioned earlier so I started tracing the wire because obviously there's an issue between this connector and that PCM because I was still only getting four or five to seven volts on that wire so I started unwrapping this harness and I found the problem Let's see if you can see that down there you see all these wires right here have rubbed onto something and they've started wearing through the installation and that red wire right there in the middle is the PCM feed and you notice that it's worn worse than all the other ones and it started to corrode so that's causing high resistance and causing our PCM not to get any power uh, another thing worth mentioning is that I have like five to seven volts on here only when it's not plugged in as soon as I plug it in I get absolutely nothing that's because the why this damaged wire is not able to provide adequate current to supply the PCM so the voltage just goes to zero so I think if I repair that I should solve a problem but the lesson here is always diagnose don't just throw parts at stuff because I was suspecting this uh, integrated power module or the front control module to be the problem or a loose connector. I really did not expect to find a damaged wire like this. But we'll go ahead and get that repaired and see if that fixes the problem. Just a close up of this PCM wire there might be one or two strands left in there but it's pretty much just an empty cavity with a ton of corrosion in it so I'm pretty certain that is definitely the problem here okay so I cut the uh, corrosion out of the PCM wire had to cut back quite a bit to get rid of all the corrosion soldered it together Unfortunately, I do not have the correct size heat shrink tubing right now, so it just got taped up for the time being so I can drive it. And the rest of the wires uh, only have damaged the insulation, uh, so that doesn't warrant uh, cutting and splicing them. So I'll just slip some heat shrink tubing over them after I get it. PCM is plugged back in. I put the uh, integrated power module back together, and we'll see if it starts. Oh, I hear the fuel pump, and I have a uh, transmission gear selector indicator is working again, which it wasn't before. And the check engine light is coming on, which it wasn't before. So it looks good. And yes, I know it sounds like crap. That's a problem for another video, though. Important thing now is it starts and it runs. Well, I've been driving it for a few days now. Haven't had any more trouble. I just had that tape on there for the time being until I can get some heat shrink. But I did get heat shrink and I've now completed the repairs on the wires. This is the PCM battery feed. And then this one, I believe, is the five volt uh, reference voltage that comes out of the PCM and feeds the various sensors on the engine. And then there's also one other wire that just had some chafed insulation, I put some heat shrink on that as well just to make sure that it's uh, not going to have any issues in the future. This is an adhesive lined heat shrink, it's sometimes called marine grade heat shrink. It's got an adhesive on the inside so when you melt it, it fills the entire inside with adhesive in addition to the shrink wrap so that will provide a nice weatherproof seal. I always like to use that kind of heat shrink when I'm dealing with something that's going to be exposed to the elements like this engine compartment. 
So now I just gotta wrap all this wire back up in the loom because I took all the tape off of it. And we should be almost done. Everything's taped back up now. Nice and neat. All plugged back in. Now originally the problem was because the wires right around here had rubbed on something and wore away the insulation and eventually it wore through the uh, wire for the uh, PCM battery feed until eventually it could no longer supply power and that's when we started having issues. So the only thing I can see near it that would have caused that is this AC line. I'll pull this back for a second. Now, this uh, AC line is made out of aluminum and it is round but there's some lettering or numbers stamped into the side here and it's actually somewhat rough on the edge so I think that this is what the wires are rubbing on and that's what caused the problem so just to prevent that from happening in the future I've added this bit of split loom so that it will not be able to rub through anything. You notice that it has some right here from the factory, but it ends right there at the bottom. So I just add some more, and that way you shouldn't have any more issues after this. And that should about take care of it.